Hi, this is Marvin. This video, I'm going to talk about maximizing opportunities. There are a lot, there are a lot of self-help books out there nowadays, um, and there are some great self-help books, but there is a lot of deception because if if you go on go on Amazon, there, you know the the pay rate per per that category is at the peak, so therefore it's going to attract more people within the population to create self-help books. So really, in terms of building success, there's always an absolute limit. And what this limit is, is we're never gonna reach. This is if, if we were to make every correct move, think of the game of chess, we made no blunders or we made the perfect moves throughout our entire life based on our initial condition of you know, our genetic potential, then we would optimize or maximize the, you could, you, could, you could call it success, because success comes in many shapes and forms. It's not just money. It's not just fame. It is a pursuit. Success is a pursuit of some goal. And the goal could be anything, really. And in order to optimize it, you have to find the niche that yields the highest uh, or yields the optimal reward feedback. Because if we, and this is dependent on the disparity between our in interests and our strengths. When anytime you have a strength, we tend to gravitate towards it because the rate of change and progression is increased. And you could think of, you don't want to go through, try to, try to uh, delve into a niche or an area that you, let's suppose, not, are not very interested in. And the rate of progression is like molasses. It's just, it's just very, very slow. And what's going to happen is not only is it going to be agonizing to try to pay attention or to try to focus on it, you're also not receiving the feedback. And therefore, it's going to cause, um, it's going to reduce the self-confidence because self-confidence is about is about the probability. Uh, it's related to the probability of achieving success for any given event. Um, you, you know, you want to pursue something, and we're everyone has a failure. We all have failures, but and eventually there's a success. You hit a failure. You hit a failure. You hit a failure. You hit a failure. Now, if it keeps going on, these micro failures, and you just, you're not really getting anywhere, and you don't, um, let's just say, you don't really yield a success, and this this really depends on how you, your expectation for this success, because we define, ultimately, we're, we're defining where we want to land, and if, if, the, if it's non-satisfactory, we could consider it's either going to be um, you could consider it a failure, but in actuality, each failure can be transformed and improved and, you know, altered in such a way to yield a better outcome. And you could think of that as success. So really success is more about movement. It's movement forward in some domain in order to optimize it there. You need one is optimism and it's very difficult I think just nowadays, because there's so many variables in play, there's a lot of stress, more responsibilities, heavier loads, more, um, and then with all these variables, you know, it's, we have to manipulate in such a way to kind of get land where we want to land. But in order to land there, it's, 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 kind of, it tends to be proportional, our expectation, um, to the, to the progression of society as a whole. And so the issue and the reason why like being optimistic, optimistic can be tough is when you know the extremes exist and there's, there's a flood of so many individuals who have success stories, you know, on YouTube. But the interesting thing is if you take any given video and it's in popularity expands and let's just suppose 
you could you could think of it as like a line segment. The video goes down one line segment, meaning it targets the audience in one specific area, a line, meaning like everyone on YouTube is on a line. Then it goes to Reddit. Some say it suppose it transfers a Reddit, gets some grabs some attention. Now it's on a different line segment, and now there's multiple divergent trans uh, modes of transfer. So essentially, all these pathways that exist, which is expanding, increasing exponentially, in the interplay between the nodes, nodes are the communic, are the essentially where the audience is. So whenever someone views it, it's a node, and the connection between them is scattered in so many different directions. What this does is it increases the probability of it landing um, right in front of you. It's it basically it's. And therefore, something that exists at the extremes is now not an extreme anymore. It's something that is nor it's something that is happen, happening more frequent. It's it's hitting the target so many times. We're just shooting, shooting in multiple different areas. It's hitting multiple targets, and you know these are in actuality these are extreme cases. But it doesn't. We perceive it. It's almost like it's given a, like an illusion. So that can a lot of times build an expectation. And if you want to get to that direction, it, it can be uh, when you set the bar high, that can be demeaning. It can be tough because at the end, uh, in the end, we need to, uh, it's very, it's, it's much harder. I think, I think nowadays there's more potential. There's way more opportunities. But the bar is getting set higher and higher and higher. The, because think about it like this. YouTube. It's uh, clearly oversaturated. Very hard to gain you know, success on this platform. And think about the thumbnail. Just the expectation of the thumbnail is increasing in quality. More and more people are spending more investment. The people at the extremes, they may have a group or collaboration of multiple people who are all funneling their strengths inward and achieving this extreme, you know, high or very high quality outcome. And it's yielding a, the success, but it's through the, you know, the, cause it's, it's by targeting so many different domains of, of, uh, of interest or different re areas of strength. Cause obviously like for, for for any given person, we have, if you think of like a global, like, like the world as a global sphere, well, our strengths are only going to be, be a small subset of that global sphere. So when you can fill in those missing puzzle pieces, when you can fill it in, you get more of a whole picture, it becomes clearer, more vivid, more captivating, and therefore, you know, it's increasing the success. So therefore, the bar is set higher. So if someone does it solo, it can be very, you know, demeaning. It's, it's, it'd be hard to get to that point. And usually there's something called an S-curve. This is something in, in any given field. You, the, it always starts with the learning curve. You learn, you learn, you fail, you fail, you fail. And it takes forever to get, you know, start moving uh, to get over the hump. But then it's, it really takes off. But... I'm finding, you know, nowadays to yield, since the bar is so higher, that's why you kind of need to get those missing puzzle pieces. You need to get targeted. You need, you can't, it's very difficult to work solo. It's not impossible, but the probability is approaching zero as the expectation goes towards infinity. Even though infinity doesn't exist, it's just a way it means to, uh, as a, it's used as a reference point. But, yeah, so that's why it's critical to be optimistic because people uh, are attracted to positive energy, and almost like if, like for instance, if you if you if you were to act narcissistic for a week, you're gonna gain more. I mean, you're gonna when you exude confidence and have all these positive traits, this is supposed, it, it can be overshadowed. Someone may not know that you exhibit or you have are categorized as a you know, narcissist. A lot of times with narcissism, it's it's very hard. 
a lot of people will met you know you may mention oh this person's narcissist or not it can be very hard to you know to actually uh, be firmly conclusive you know or find be conclusive that someone exists within the bounds of narcissism or what we define as such because we all exhibit narcissistic traits but the key traits of such as like positivity confidence you exude you know you're assertive you have all these traits that actually uh, you know people are attracted it's like attracted to it's like the electron you have you have a nucleus of an atom and you have the electron field we have the there's electrons that have a force that are has an affinity to the nucleus and, per, and the force is proportional to the mass so you can think of this these positive traits as increasing mass the more traits you increase the more optimistic you become you're increasing the mass and therefore there, you're gonna have more force forces pointing in your direction meaning like people are going to be attracted to the exude your energy positive energy um, by and rather than negative energy which is repulsive negative energy is like a vibration force it's like what splits the atom so entropy anything that's you know negative it causes instability so that is a critical thing you know to be optimistic and another factor is divergence because if, if you just if you if you're always comfortable in your environments and you're, you're not straying away from the boundaries of your environment frequently and you're always in the localized very localized region well opportunities of course are going to converge or are going to increase to the maximum potential when you exhibit the positive traits and provided that you latch on to them opportunities can exist in so many different regions but there exist opportunities in other regions of the globe such that if you were to travel to that one area instantaneously you would captivate or you would be able to latch on to this opportunity and convert it the potential energy into the kinetic energy and actually use utilize it so there's so many different opportunities that exist in multiple different areas or regions so therefore by diverging from your area of observation or you know your your typical environment you you increase the opportunities another factor is network so of course with people who have a good social group tend to have more opportunities because you know most fields are you know you you deal with uh, social situations on a daily basis and, and, and this is predominant in majority of fields and you know like um, opportunities are predicated on social encounters you know if people didn't exist and you were the only one so on the world it kind of collapses in terms of like the in terms of the opportunities that are catalyzed by people and in order to uh, in order to reach it you need to it's like it's like you know a game of billiards you got to be able to bounce around and um, and show you know the optimism optimistic spirit positive energy and be able to um, direct yourself in this world in multiple different areas you know uh, because opportunities are not just going to be you know handed to us we have to go seek them and that's that's the key criteria and uh i, I just think like being uh when you're optimistic or in, and especially like uh not a, a big key factor is like exercise because optimism is proportional to mental and physical health or the you know the uh the degree that or the status of our body because you know it, it, it's it, it's dictated by based on the oxygenation of the brain and when your brain doesn't receive a lot of oxygen which it degrades over time you lose processing speed you lose the uh, capacity to solve novel problems you know you lose you start deteriorating or decaying and the, the rate of decay is inevitable but we can prevent that through exercise and aerobic activity 
So that's another factor if you want to enhance opportunities is to always, you know, maintain fitness, physical fitness. And these are just, you know, areas that, uh, that should be pretty evident, but, um, just through my experience, you know, I've noticed that in terms of success, um, especially now, nowadays, there, there needs to be a breaking point. If you have an idea that has worked, there needs to be a point where you can leverage that idea and improve it to some degree, make it useful. And I think nowadays what people want in the future is speed. Processing speed's increasing because the demands of society are increasing. You got more load, more go to Starbucks. You got lines, people going to Starbucks day after day by number, just by the numbers are expanding. It's it's crazy. And, and therefore, if the, if the employee load stays the same, you have to increase processing speed to, uh, to satisfy the demands of the, of the customers. And therefore your executive function, every, you know, all these tasks, like everything needs to speed up because there's more people, the population's increasing and so forth. So especially in these populated, populated or these densely populated areas, processing speed is definitely going to increase. And guess what? The opportunities are incre are enhanced or maximized in these areas. There's more opportunities in populated de or densely populated areas like Dallas, New York, California. And um, so it is imperative to create something, come up with something that is quick and efficient. We want speed and efficiency and usability. We want something that, you know, because patience, when process of speed increases, patience floors. The propensity for patient and patience increases. And of course, it's it's like you go on a highway. This is an analogy. You're going very fast, 100 miles per hour. So then abruptly you, you stop and you're going 20, 15 miles per hour. Well, in this case, that 15 is going to drag. It's going to seem so much slower you're going to perceive it as so much slower because you haven't adapted, you haven't adjusted. Just like your eyes adjust when you go from light to dark. You just, and therefore to overcompensate, you tend to drive faster and it's easier to have a speeding ticket. And that's why police officers, it's probably smart of them to be in that area where you're, you know, the ramp off the highways or, you know, where you're slowing down or in that localized region because the probability is likely higher for that reason. And because of this, we, you know, we have to tend to, you know, shift between tasks very rapidly and, you know, don't really spend, have the attention span to spend much time in various tasks. So usability is critical. And, and, and also, we are becoming a picture-centered society. So, you know, that's why thumbnails are evidently very important if you want to get, you know, on YouTube, you need to increase the quality. It's just like the dollar menu at McDonald's. You look at the menu and it's captivating you know you want to eat, eat a big mac because it, it, it just it just looks so appealing and you know it, it kind of grab you gravitate towards that and we gravitate towards memes and you know anything with pictures we are social media it's all we're flooded with pictures pictures after pictures and and therefore our we're, we're receptive to that we gain reward we're basically changing the reward feedback and it's actually becoming dampened over time and the reason for this suppose we were to reduce the resolution and the quality, it would actually, and, and suppose it's it's a large deviation, large distance. Well, depending on the upper limits, basically, and the distance between the quality, it's going to create a disproportionately large uh, dampening effect on our reward system based on how high the upper limit is. So if something is extremely incredibly precise, incredibly high quality, and you lower it to something pretty low, you're going to notice a difference to such a degree. That's why, like with the cosmetic industry and people in bodybuilding, we're noticing defects at such high capacity. It's increasing. Things are be increasing resolution. It's causing even more self-esteem problems because of that. We're, we have to cover it up. And, you know, this, this, is, a, this is one way if you want to gain success, if you want to gain the support of the mass, you need to focus on uh, high quality 
uh, imagery or, or just even your logo, if you have a company logo or any, you know, anything, uh, of course, company logo now it's being modernized, but in general, like if you build a website, a company website, it needs to be, uh, aesthetically pleasing. And, and that's, uh, being more, in, in more demand. So in terms of the yeah, success, there's so many different pathways we can take. Um, but the key criteria is being persistent, understanding that, you know, it's like a journey, uh, and, you know, always not letting the S curve, you know, the minimal, um, minimum or, or the amount of resistance needed to start steadily climbing, not letting that affect us negatively. But I, I just think now it can be very difficult in this, uh, uh, society because the external world seems to have much a higher, higher influence just because the flux of the flux of uh you know situ the flux of uh success stories and and just people posting all you know their happy moments and excluding all the negative moments because i think it just it, there's a higher threshold to reach satisfaction or happiness nowadays we, even though we have more opportunities more possibilities at our disposal our reward feedback's being changed and altered such that the bar is being set higher and therefore you know if if, if you're lagging or dragging low and you know, you have something happen and it causes you, you know, the crash or you deal with depression or whatnot. It, it can be very, really agonizing just knowing what, what existed, what is possible, what is out there that you at this current point no longer can attain. But really keeping health markers in place, um, exercising, Staying positive is probably the best way. Trying to be resist resist against external negativity, and and this is a way, pathway to lead to uh, success. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. It's a journey, and it takes time. But yeah, that's just all I had in terms of this segment. Um, hope it helped, and I will see you next time.